Welcome to the Indie Film Hustle Podcast, episode number 176. When you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. Eric Thomas. Broadcasting from the back alley in Hollywood, it's the Indie Film Hustle Podcast, where we show you how to survive and thrive as an indie filmmaker in the jungles of the film biz. And here's your host, Alex Ferrari. Welcome, my indie film hustlers, to another episode of the Indie Film Hustle Podcast. I am your humble host, Alex Ferrari. Now, today's show is sponsored by Audible, and if you guys are like me, I'm constantly learning and reading as many things as I can, and sometimes I can't just sit down for hours and read a book, so I love listening to audiobooks, and Audible gives you one free audiobook that you can download and listen anywhere while you're on the go, while you're doing other work, and it helps you keep that education going, keeps you learning new things, and keeps you moving forward, and I've downloaded filmmaking books, screenwriting books, inspirational books, business books, all sorts of different books that that I listen to all the time. So just head over to freefilmbook.com. That's freefilmbook.com and download your free filmmaking, screenwriting, or any kind of book you'd like. So I'm jacked up today, guys. I told you that I was redesigning Indie Film Hustle, and I am proud to say that Indie Film Hustle 2.0 is now up online. It's been taking me weeks to, uh, to redesign the entire website from scratch, from the bottom up, and I'm super excited to share it with you guys. I wanted to make it more user friendly. I wanted to I wanted to organize all this insane content. I just realized I have over 450 articles, podcasts, and blog posts on the site, and there was just so much information that a lot of it got lost in the old design. So hopefully, in this new design, you guys will have access to be able to get the information you need that I have on there. And as I continue to put more content on there, uh, become a resource for you guys. And also there's easy links to courses, to books, to uh, instructional videos, as well as highlights of each individual category, which I've broken up into six categories, which is screenwriting, directing, film production, post-production, and marketing and distribution. And it's really clear, really clean. I would love for you guys to check it out. Just, of course, just go to IndieFilmHustle.com. Let me know what you think. Message me. Email me. Uh, Again, the email is at ifhsubmissions at gmail.com. And uh, let me know what you think. If you guys find any problems anywhere on the site, anything's dead or dead links, I am going to be going through a site audit soon, which is meaning that I'm going to go through all my content re-up all my content, get rid of old content that's not relevant anymore, and just doing all sorts of stuff. I'm trying to make the indie film hustle experience for you guys as amazing as possible. And I want to give you an update on Meg. Uh, First of all, I had the LA premiere at the Chinese Theater. We have video coming out soon of it. And it was so exciting and surreal to be showing my little film, this little film that Jill and I did, Uh, last year and we're playing it at the Chinese theater, the world famous Chinese theater. It was, it was pretty amazing and very humbling and we had a great crowd. Everyone really loved it. We had a wonderful Q and a, which we'll be posting up on YouTube soon. And the sales of Meg have been coming in and they've been doing well. I've got some big news. I can't tell you yet because contracts haven't been signed, but there has been a big, wonderful development with Meg And I think you guys are going to be super excited and I can't wait to share the information with you. But I can't say anything just yet because some contracts have to be signed first. But stay tuned for that. And then as the months go on, uh, I will let you guys know what our numbers are in regards to sales. And I'll give you some generalized numbers and and, and what platforms are doing better for us. But uh, And I haven't forgotten about you guys internationally. I know you guys have been hounding me to get, uh, get access to This Is Meg. We are. We've already submitted to Vimeo Pro. Uh, Vimeo Pro should be up and running hopefully this week. As soon as it is, I'll I'll mention it on the podcast and I'll send it out to everybody. So anybody outside of the U.S. Uh, or doesn't have access to iTunes and Amazon uh, for video, you'll be able to get it on Vimeo Pro. So thank you guys so much for your patience. Now today's episode is all about being a jack of all trades and how important it is. And I think this is something that filmmakers, especially newer filmmakers coming out, don't really grasp because film schools don't teach this. Film schools are very old school in the way they teach things. It's all, you know, everything's segmented into departments. And in the bigger system, in the bigger studio system, that makes a lot of sense. 
and I've worked on big projects, and you need to have that kind of uh, you know organization with head of departments and working with different crews. You have to have that. The bigger the movie, the more you have to do that. But for the indie filmmaker, the micro-budget filmmaker, the filmmaker that's just coming up, the ones that are making their own films from scratch with five grand, 20 grand, 50 grand, and can't afford to have all of those crews, you have to have a skill set. You have to have a bunch of tools in your toolbox. Now, I've, I've amassed a, a bunch of tools that I have in my toolbox that I pulled out when I made This Is Meg. Without those tools, without that knowledge and experience, I would have not been able to make This Is Meg on such a small, humble budget, of course, under $24 million. But you know, without those tools, I wouldn't have been able to do it. So I wanted to impress upon you guys and talk a little bit about skills that every filmmaker should have some knowledge about. Now, I'm not saying that we all have to be Robert Rodriguez that go out and make and do everything themselves. He runs the steady cam, he he composes the music, he sound designs, he does all of it. I'm not saying you have to do that. But having knowledge in every aspect of the business and other aspects of things that you might not associate with needing to know right away as a filmmaker because the more knowledge you have, the more dangerous you are as a filmmaker. And that's a good place to be. You know how wonderful it is for me to wake up in the morning and go, you know what? I'm going to go make a movie in the next month. And I have everything I need to go make the movie. And I have the skill sets that I need to go make the movie. And if I don't have those skill sets, I'm going to learn it. Exactly what I did with Meg. I had no idea how to record audio for Meg. And I taught myself how to record decent audio. I'm not the best. It's not like you know Oscar-winning kind of audio recording, but it's good. It's good enough. It's at a high quality, and that's all I could ask for. So some of the things that I think you guys need to, as a filmmaker, and for all those screenwriters out there listening, these are things that you guys got to do as well. If it's not on the production side, some of the stuff I'm going to talk about later is something else you guys are going to need as well. So first and foremost, if you're going to be a filmmaker, you need to learn directing. And that's the easy thing. Everybody wants to be a director. Everyone thinks they're, they're good directors until they get on the set and they're like, oh my God, what the hell am I gotten myself into? It's happened to me early on in my career. It happens. So directing, obviously producing, understanding where to get your money from, how you're going to get your money, how you're going to organize a crew, how are you going to do call sheets, how are you going to do um, your first AD's job, how are you going to do all of those jobs that help in the actual producing of a film, locations, how to go get locations on the cheap, how to get permits if you need to get permits, how are you going to go steal stuff, can you go steal stuff legally, all these kind of things. These are skills that you really need to understand and, and know cinematography. You have to understand basic cinematography. You have to understand the basic camera that you're using, the basic lenses that you're using, like what lenses are what, what focal lengths can do to your image and how you can tell your story as a filmmaker. You also have to understand the camera you're using. If you don't, if you know, I I was talking to someone the other day and they were like, oh yeah, we're shooting this thing on this Canon something or other. I'm like, How can you be that way? Like, I I looked at him. I'm like, are you crazy? Do you not understand? You're just trusting someone else to just give you a camera. And I saw the stuff they were shooting and it looked like, you know, not that good because they didn't, you know, they didn't know what they were doing. They didn't understand the capabilities of that camera. They didn't understand the workflow all the way through post-production. I'll get to that in a minute. But you have to understand this kind of stuff if you're gonna if you're gonna succeed at this low budget, at this no budget world. If you don't understand these basic things, you will fail. How I cannot tell you how many filmmakers I've worked with over the years that didn't understand this basic concept that they just trusted a DP or someone who called themselves a DP, and all of a sudden they get into post and they're like, oh my god, everything doesn't look good. Oh, the lighting is not great. Well, because you didn't know what you were doing. You have to understand the basics of it. You have to understand basic lighting. Not, You don't have to be a, you know, an ASC cinematographer. You have to understand basic lighting. I've never direct, I, well, I've never DP'd a feature film before. I've done commercials and things like that, but I never DP'd a feature film before. And I just took it on with Meg as an experiment. I'm like, well, you know what? I think I can do this. I taught myself as much as I could. I did a lot of testing on my own and I figured it out. And I made and I made it look decent, but I understood my camera. I understood what the capabilities of my camera was. I understood the capabilities of the lights I had. And did I make mistakes along the way? Absolutely. There was a lot of mistakes I fixed in post. But why? Because I also had that tool set of a colorist, which I'll get to in a minute. 
These are certain basic things that you need to learn. Another thing you need to understand is production design, just basic production design. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsor. And now back to the show. And I know production design is a very big word, and you know what? It is on bigger movies. But when you're doing a low-budget movie, you've got to be able to understand production design. James Cameron was production designing Titanic with his production designer. He was the one telling them what to do. James Cameron is one of those filmmakers who knows more about the other person's job than they do because that's how intense of a filmmaker it is, and you can tell in the work that he puts out. When we did Broken, I didn't. I never production designed a thing in my life, but we walked into a hospital that had floors, and I'm not exaggerating, floors of old, just equipment and gnarly looking stuff. And my producer and I just sat down and grabbed a bunch of stuff and production designed the entire movie ourselves. And when we needed when we needed uh, furniture to fill up a, an apartment. What did we do? We went to Rena Center. I cover that entire Odyssey on episode 102. Uh, of the, the podcast and I talk about how we just basically rented all of our furniture and had them deliver it, install it for us and also pick it up a day later and we didn't have to even worry about it. So these are little things you have to understand. So when you're talking to a production designer, you know these little tips, you know how you know how they can do things on the cheap maybe. And you know when we made up a, a guacamole gun, you know which shoots blood out so you can get a really realistic blood hit. We built that ourselves. Why? Because we taught ourselves how to do that. These are things you need to understand. Now, another big thing that all filmmakers need to understand is screenwriting, writing a story, being able to construct a story, story structure. These are basic things that all filmmakers need to understand. If you're a director and you don't understand story structure and you're just relying on a writer to give you a script and you're just going to shoot it, you're you're not going to do well. And God knows Hollywood is full of those, aren't they? People who don't understand the basic concepts of story. And I understand that it could be a little intimidating, like, oh my God, Alex, you want me to be a screenwriter as well as a director? Look, do what I did. I took Meg and we did a scriptment for it. You know, that's what the Duplass brothers did. That's what Joe Swanberg did. That's what Lynn Shelton does. All of these guys just grab a really big uh, scriptment, which is basically an outline of the entire movie. And then just have actors improv their lines. And it works great. It depends on the kind of movie you're making, but it's in a way of doing it. Don't let any of these things stop you. Just keep going. Pick up the, the knowledge you need to and go. The next thing, huge thing that all filmmakers need to understand is post-production. In today's world, post-production is so crucial to all of your films. It, you you are all going to go, you're all going to visit me. You're all going to go through me at one point or another. Understanding editing, understanding color grading, understanding post-production supervision, understanding um, online editorial, your deliverables, understanding what editing system you're going to be using, understanding post-production workflow. All this information is out there. A lot of it's on the website. You could definitely check it out. But understand a little bit of all of this. So if you're a filmmaker, which I've worked with many who are a producer and they walk into a post suite and they're like, oh, I just shot a $200,000 movie. Well, how much money do you have for post? Oh, we've got $5,000. I'm like, are you mad? Like, why would you do that? You have a $200,000 movie and you're basically just chipping, cheaping out on post. Your movie's going to come out horrible. You know, it's not going to do well. So you have to understand all of that. Going forward, another huge aspect of the film business that I guarantee you 99% of filmmakers don't understand is distribution. Understanding how you're going to get your film out into the world. How are you going to make money with your film? Understanding revenue streams. Understanding how to either self-distribute your film or work with a traditional distributor. And there is times to do both. The smaller the film... The less risks you're taking, you can self-distribute. If you have a bigger film, you're going to have to probably go to a traditional distributor unless you're able to do the next skill that you have to understand. Audience building, crowd funding, and crowdsourcing. You have to understand audience building. You have to understand how to get an audience, how to market to an audience, how to get them to be excited about your project. These are crucial skills. Crowdfunding, if you want to start crowdfunding your movies, that's also a form of audience building. Crowdsourcing, which is uh, another form of audience building. 
I go into so much detail about all of these things I'm talking about in the web on the website and past podcasts and 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 sections of the of the website. So you really have no excuse. There's so much information that you can go through Indie Film Hustle and find out all of these. Just type in the search bar exactly what you, what I'm talking about. And there's probably an article or a podcast discussing this. Educate yourselves even at the basic level so you understand it. And if you want to go into it more, you should definitely go into a more, explore it more, and put more tools in your toolbox. So those are the big, big things that you really need to understand as a filmmaker. But I'm going to tell you a few things that you really should know and really should learn that are not taught in schools and are not generally things that filmmakers say that they have to do. Now, everything I'm going to talk about coming forward, going forward, you know, you could hire people to do it, and that's fine. But when you got no money, you gotta got to do it yourself. And I've worked in, I've worked with other people trying to do these things that I'm going to talk about, and it never works out for me because I know I know I guess a little too much about those sections. So I want things certain ways and they can't they can't do it. So I just end up just doing it myself. Now, a few things you need to learn. Web design. Oh, I know. Web design. Alex, I'm not a web designer. Why should I know about web design? Because every single movie you put out, you need to create a website. Every production company you create, you need to create a website. Your personal page, you need to create a website. All of these things have to create a website. Now, it doesn't have to be hard. You can use Squarespace. Uh, I don't get paid by Squarespace. I'm not uh, I'm not affiliated with them at all. We go to Squarespace and build a website up in five minutes, a nice-looking, basic website. If you want to take your site up to another level, then just uh, I'll put a link in the description for how to build a site like Indie Film Hustle. Not nearly as complex or anything, but the tools I use. I use WordPress. I use Beaver Builder, WordPress Beaver Builder, and I host with Bluehost. And those three things, combine those things, you have drag and drop design. It's super easy, super simple. And if you have basic graphic design skills, you should be able to do it without a problem. And even if you don't, there are services out there that can help you. Another skill, branding, understanding branding. You could pick up simple books on just understanding branding. Gary V. Uh, Gary Vanderchuk has a ton of them. One's called Crush It. You should definitely read that book. It's amazing. I'll put a link in the description. Branding, understanding how to sell and, and yourself, your movie, your company, so important if you want to succeed as an independent filmmaker in the world today and moving forward. Also, social media, social media marketing. Understand the power of social media, how to build a social media following, how to build a Twitter following, how to build Facebook, how to build YouTube, how to build Instagram, how to understand those platforms. These are things you have to learn. And I said before, graphic design, basic graphic design skills, understanding Photoshop, understanding how to be able to put all things together in Photoshop. Again, basic stuff. I'm not talking about you have to become a Photoshop expert. Hell, I'm not about a Photoshop expert, but I know enough about Photoshop to get the job done. And if they ask me to do something a little bit more enhanced, I'm like, sorry, I'm out. Uh, so that's not a skill set that I have a deep, but I do enough. I know enough of that skill to do what I need to do and move forward. So as far as web de- web design, helping with web design, graphic design for posters, graphic design for uh, social media posts, and so on, that's what I have. That's what I use Photoshop for. You really have to also understand marketing and PR, understanding what it could be done for you, where to spend money, where not to spend money. Is traditional media even make sense anymore to like spend money? On a front, you know, a full page ad on in in uh, Variety or something like that to promote your movie, or is that money better spent uh, on Facebook ads? You know, things like that. You really have to understand these things. Now, I know I've thrown a lot at you guys, and there's probably a, a bunch of stuff that I have not even uh, covered. But these are basic sets of things that you have to understand and have to understand basic knowledge of to move forward as a filmmaker. I know it's immense, but you know what? That's what this is. That's what this business is. If you are trying to come up from the from the street where I am, <laughs> you know, or, you know, just coming up, you know, and just starting and building your career, that long play career that I've told you about, not the one year plan, but the ten year plan. This will take time, but I'm not saying you have to learn all of these today. Take the next year and take a month, and every month learn a new skill set. Why not? Because at the end of the day. When you have that skill set, guess what, guys? When you understand web design and things are not going that well in filmmaking, you can maybe get a little side job doing web design or graphic design 
or branding or PR or do other sorts of things because the more skills you have in that box, the more things you can fall back on as you're moving forward in your filmmaking on your filmmaking path. That's what I did. I learned editing. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsor. And now back to the show. Editing was my skill. That's where I learned, that's what I made my living on for the first part of majority of my career was editing. Then I jumped into color grading. Then I jumped into post-production supervision because it was just an extension of edit, edit, editing and editorial and creative editing. And as I kind of kept growing and growing and growing my skill set to the point now where I don't edit often now for, for pay. I don't do it often. I, I rather do color grading, but I have that as a backup. And I could always, you know, people hire me and try to hire me all the time to do creative editorial. And I, I say, no, I really rather not because I have more fun and it's faster for me to do color grading or online editorial or post-production supervision or some other areas that I, I like to do. So the more tools you have in your box, the more successful you're going to be, not only as a filmmaker, but in life. You know, I have a, a, a lot of tools in my toolbox. And if I wanted to, I can go off and do other things if I wanted to because of all the skills I've gathered over the years. And that's what it's all about. It's about what life's about, guys. And I don't want to be all hunky dory and, you know, kumbaya, but life's about building that toolbox, building that toolbox, making it full of knowledge and skills and experience that you can continue taking with you on your path, on your filmmaking path or on your life path. And that's so, so important. Now, again, a lot of things that I've talked about is scary to jump into right away, specifically like like for me, cinematography. I jumped into cinematography on Meg and I probably will do the same thing on my next feature. Now, I understand I'm not the at a level of cinematography as my friend Suki, who's an ASC DP. He has been training for 30 years as a, as a cinematographer and knows all things cinematography. I don't. I know just enough to get me where I need to go. And I have as much, I have knowledge in color grading that helped me with that. So I had a really good feeling that I could do the job. So I leaned on my other experiences. I leaned on other things. So if you if you are a carpenter and you're coming into the film business, Chances are that skill set you can lean on if you're going to be a production designer, if you're going to production design a set. So you you feel really comfortable like, well, you know what? I've built houses. I've built tables. I've built other props, other furniture before. Why can't I do props? So you can lean on that experience. And that's what I'm trying to have you do is build that toolbox, build that toolbox full of tools that you can use not only in filmmaking, but in life. And that is something that a lot of People don't understand and people don't get that, oh, I'm just going to learn that. Why am I going to learn that? I could just hire someone to do that. But if you know it, you become dangerous. You become someone not to be trifled with. You know, no one's going to take advantage of you. And in this business, I hate to break it to you guys, but not everyone is really that scrupulous sometimes. And I'm not trying to paint that everybody in the film business is, is, is out to get you. They're not. But like in any place, in any any business, in any industry in the world, they're good and they're bad. So the more knowledge you have, the more defense you have against people who are trying to take advantage of you in any aspect of the business, specifically distribution, because <laughs> that's one place that a lot of filmmakers, like I said, 99.9% filmmakers don't understand distribution. And I just want you guys to understand something that a lot of the skills I'm talking about right now, I've learned over the last two years. I didn't understand social media before. Uh, before I opened up any film hustle, I had, I didn't have. I just had a Facebook, my own personal Facebook. That was it. I had no understanding about Facebook. I had no understanding about Twitter. I had no understanding about distribution. I never knew anything about distribution. But from working on indie film hustle, doing all that content, interviewing masters and professionals in every aspect of the film business. I've picked up skills along the way and resources along the way that have made me a much more dangerous filmmaker and a much more capable filmmaker. I couldn't have done This Is Meg two years ago before I opened up Indie Film Hustle. I needed Indie Film Hustle to learn all the skills that I did not know in order to make it. And I'm, and that's the same thing moving forward. There's so many things else I'm, I'm going to be learning moving forward. The more books that I'm going to read, more courses that I'm going to take. I take courses all the time. I'm reading all the time. 
That's why I always listen to audiobooks wherever I go. I always have an audiobook playing. I'm, sometimes I'm learning about things that have nothing to do with the film business because I want to experience other aspects of life. And I bring those experiences into my filmmaking. As George Lucas said, if you want to be a filmmaker, you, the first thing you have to do is live. Go out there and live. Get those experiences. Bring them back into your filmmaking, into your writing, and so on. So I hope this episode was helpful to you guys. Uh, you know, I wanted to kind of put together this and, and just put a, a little bit of a spotlight on the need of being a jack of all trades. And like they say, oh, you're a jack of all trades, master of none. You know what? I might not be a master of all my tools that are in my toolbox, but I know enough to get by. And I know enough about those aspects to move me forward in my journey in life and as a filmmaker. If you want to check out the show notes, they are at IndieFilmHustle.com forward slash 176. And I just want to make sure you guys make sure you guys know that this is Meg is available not only on iTunes but also on Amazon for rental or purchase. So please head out. And if you guys have seen the movie, please leave me uh, a good review on either Amazon or uh, iTunes. It really helps us with the rankings and and getting up higher and getting more people to see the movie. So really, man, thank you so much for all the support, guys. And head over to indiefilmhustle.com. I want you guys to see all the hard work I've been doing the last few weeks. Uh, and and see what you think. And uh, I just, I'm excited to keep bringing you guys more amazing content and helping you guys on your journey. So, and as always, keep that hustle going, keep that dream alive, and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to the Indie Film Hustle podcast at IndieFilmHustle.com. That's I-N-D-I-E-F-I-L-M-H-U-S-T-L-E.com. 